Spare the rod and spoil the child. This is something you won't hear many parents saying today, but you don't have to go too far back to when it was often said. The term that originated in the Bible basically means that if parents don't give their kids a good beating now and again, they will become spoiled. For the most part, corporal punishment is frowned upon today, and in many countries it's illegal. But go and ask a bunch of Generation Xs about their childhood, and no doubt you'll hear stories of parents taking a slipper to them or teachers in school bringing out the cane or paddle and reddening their backsides in front of the class. Today, we're going to delve into the worst sorts of punishments metered out on kids in the past, and we should tell you that the brutality was rather surprising to us when we first started researching this topic. While those beaten in Generation X may still be traumatized today relating to the punishments they suffered, we can't even imagine what kids in the past must have felt. Parenting back in the day was, for the most part, just more barbaric in nature. So before we tell you exactly how it was barbaric, let's first touch on why it was. The obvious thing you might think of is just because life was harder in general. Listen to older folks talk about their wartime years in, say, the UK, and you'll hear stories of hardships and Christmases in which they were presented with the wonderful gift of an apple. If parents' lives were full of hardships and woes, of course that might sometimes mean kids' lives were hard. We've likely all heard the words from an older person, oh, when I was your age, and then you're told how life was so tough for them. You might well say that one day yourself. Trust us, you might say you'll never say it, but it might well happen. Our research led us to the writer Steven Pinker, and in his huge book on the history of human violence, he has a part on what he calls the rights movements. This included human rights in general, women's rights, civil rights, gay rights, animal rights, and the topic of today's show, children's rights. You see, before these great movements, people had few channels to redress abuse when it happened. If you were a kid, you were at the mercy of your parents or teachers, and you might be told that you should be seen but not heard. You took your beating on the chin, and if you opened your mouth or spilled too many tears, you might just get more of a beating. Social services were not going to get in on the act. Kids essentially had no rights. According to Pinker, the majority of people in the past believed parents needed to be savage like this because if they weren't, the kid would grow unruly and have no respect for them or authority. He mentions a French saying that went better to beat your child than to see him hanged when grown. In the 18th and 19th centuries in America, he writes that kids were hardened with whips, sticks, and rods. But all over the world, kids were neglected or tortured. He also mentioned something called the parent-offspring conflict, which means that parents and children might be in conflict over the amount of investment the parents should put into the upbringing of a child. Having kids was seen as hard work, it was even dangerous for the women back then, and so the kids were so often seen as just lucky to be alive and to have food and shelter. For that, they had to pay back be good kids, and parents were very willing to beat them to make that happen. The kids, on the other hand, have their own expectations as to how they're treated. Concepts of child rearing started to change during the age of reason and enlightenment, when great thinkers started saying that kids were grown-ups in the making, and how you treat them will affect how they'll become as adults. English philosopher John Locke proposed that just mindless beating didn't work, and that kids had to learn from their mistakes. This seems basic now, but back then it wasn't. It was progressive. For hundreds of years, it was said kids were little devils, and the devils inside them needed beating out. Now you know where the expression beat the devil out of him comes from, and that expression had been used quite literally. Kids were treated like disasters waiting to happen, born with badness, but then writers such as Jean-Jacques Rousseau said, wait a minute, we're born pure, a blank slate, and it's what happens to us that can create a demon. Everything degenerates in the hands of man, he wrote. But still, it would be a long time until parents hung up their rods and whips. Ok, so there you have a simple explanation. Some parents were brutal because life was hard, because they thought kids needed badness beaten out of them, because little devils need time, money, and effort invested in them, and parents were not going to take a risk and allow the child to become an unruly failure. Then we thought, huh, maybe we shouldn't beat them so hard, torture them. But it wasn't until only recently that parents started to think mere spanking was bad. Nowadays, we even have critics telling us that we're too nice to our kids. But now, let's talk about some of those punishments. So, first of all, we don't need to explain to you what slapping and smacking are. These forms of punishments can still be seen today, and prior to, say, the 90s, it was quite normal to see kids being smacked hard. But what about when instruments of torture are used? The Rod 
When we say the rod, what we really mean is a stick. Hitting kids with a stick was quite the normal thing, and it's not difficult to imagine how it happened. In later years, you would find parents using household objects, such as when kids in the UK would talk about getting the shoe. This was also sometimes called slippering. In schools, caning and paddling was not abnormal until it was outlawed most places in the late 20th century. But you can find news reports today that talk about people being caned in public for ostensible wrongdoings. Paddling caused less damage to the skin than a stick, but it still hurt like hell. You can also find school punishments in the English Harrow Punishment Book, and you'll find whipping stools or ceremonial birching. This is when a kid is tied over something, has his pants pulled down, and is hit with a bundle of birch twigs. The Cat O' Nine Tails This instrument to beat kids looked a bit like a stick with a frayed rope at the end. It was essentially a whipping device that could draw blood. We rarely hear about it being used on kids, but according to the psychohistory writer Lloyd de Mouse, children got the Cat O' Nine Tails in the past. In Scottish schools, you might have found something called the Twas, which was very similar but often used on the hands. De Mouse writes that kids were punished like this to beat the poison out of them, again referring to little devils. Parents, he said, thought the experience would be detoxifying for their children. What's crazy is that he writes that kids of the past would be prone to fits, outbursts, and so they would get detoxified even more. The bad parents didn't realize it was likely their rough justice that was causing the outbursts. The Goad this was something like a cobbler's knife, according to Steve Pinker. It's not a nice looking thing, and it said it was used to prick the child on the hands or head when that kid got out of hand. The Flapper We'll let the writer of a book about corporal punishment through the ages describe to you what the flapper was. There is historical evidence for frequent use of various sorts of instruments for beating by parents and teachers, including special appliances for flogging children at school, such as the flapper, which had a pear-shaped end and a round hole to raise blisters. Just to make that worse, we're told that these punishments would start in infancy, and according to DeMouse, they often had an erotic element to them as the genitals were often the target of the operation. Hardening Again, the writer DeMouse is our source. In his book German Parenting, he wrote that to harden kids, they would sometimes be thrown into cold water or snow and left until it was unbearable. Sometimes they were tied to bedposts for days, sat on top of hot stoves, and other times just forced to kneel on hard logs for hours on end while their parents relaxed in the background. He even writes that during toilet training, the kids must be given enemas to make them learn faster. And no, this wasn't ancient history, it was the turn of the 20th century. He writes that at the same time the Japanese were giving enemas to their young kids, but it was constant and not just a punishment. He also said Japanese parents would burn their kids with incense, strangle them, hang them up by their feet, routinely beat them and kick them, force them to shower in the freezing cold, and worst of all, drive needles into the body of their kids or cut off finger joints. DeMouse believes this kind of wickedness might explain some of the Japanese atrocities of the Second World War. Japan's prisons in the past were also well known to be places of regular torture. Terrorizing if torturing and beating kids didn't work, sometimes parents would hurt their children psychologically. We might recall European folktales that often included kids wandering off someplace only to be eaten and have their bones ground to dust. But what about those awful nursery rhymes? This is one such rhyme some English kids learned when they were just infants. Baby, 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 if he hears you, as he gallops past your house. Limb from limb he'll tear you, just as a pussy tears a mouse. And he'll beat you, beat you, beat you, and he'll beat you all to pap. And he'll eat you, eat you, eat you, every morsel, snap, snap, snap. We can imagine that that was less entertaining than SpongeBob, but perhaps those kids were quite in bed at night, if not traumatized for life. No doubt we've missed a few punishments, so we hope you can add something to the list. Also, what do you think about corporal punishment? From the harshest to the least harsh we've mentioned, do you think it works? Have you experienced it? Tell us what you think in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Worst Punishments Kids Receive From Their Parents. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.